I'm Jim Nielsen. I live on North Creek. Uh, a little background about me. I've only appeared at one meeting before, uh, about a year and a half ago, when there was some initial uh, discussion in this project. Uh, like most people in this community, I don't have a lot of extra time, but keep tabs on exactly what's going on. So I haven't really had a chance to follow on uh, the various developments in the environmental review, the planning, and the fine tuning, as Eric would say. Uh, but I will say that I, I offered some thoughts a year and a half ago that I, I think are probably going to come true. Uh, and just to give you an idea of why I think these things, my background is not only in my growing up in this neighborhood, I was, I've been in this neighborhood since 1958. Uh, uh, so I grew up around Mill Creek. I, I did it as a child. I went to local schools, graduated from Taylor High School, uh, went off. I've returned in the last decade or so to take over the family house here. Um, in the meantime, my professional background is I'm a lawyer. I've been a lawyer for 35 years. I have been in law firm management for a national firm. I have run a couple of small firms. I currently run my own firm. Uh, locally, uh, and I've counseled national, national corporations, uh, small businesses, individuals on avoiding problems and keeping out of litigation and stuff like that. I've represented architecture firms, I've deposed architects, I've defended architects and depositions, I've defended projects, and what I thought a year and a half ago was that the board has not done a really good job of preparing the community for what this is going to look like because what Eric said is exactly true. If you ask you know, hundreds of people walk down the uh, meadow path along the side of Miller Creek every day, and they have, most of them, none of them have any idea this is going on because most people don't read, you know, don't pay attention to your uh, uh, notices of meetings and don't read next door and so forth. I hear there's a lot of uh, fire on next door about this particular project right now. Uh, but it's a very large project. It is, to most people who have not been in the process, shockingly large. Uh, that was my impression a year and a half ago. Uh, Eric has pointed out that, our district manager Eric, that is, has pointed out that this project has evolved and grown, which is normal in this sort of process. So it continues to get a little larger and larger. And, uh, it is what you said, what exactly? Uh, 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 so, I mean, there's, it's, a, it's a fairly aggressive design. I, you know, I thought, the, I thought, frankly, the planning mistake the board made was to defer to staff, as you say. That would be Eric and the gardeners and so forth as to what they want, what they think they need. Uh, I think that's, frankly, a fairly of leadership board. I think the board should tell staff what they should do rather than uh, uh, take it from them as to what they would like. And I think that's part of the problem because it's very large. And I suspect that by the time, if you were to vote tonight, to uh, pass on the uh, design as it now stands with Bill Hansel having modified things, having cut a few angles, having uh, angle a few items here, uh, reduce the size of the roof on the, uh, I guess that's the south side, uh, trying to pick up on some of the improvements people suggested, you're going to run into a problem with the public uh, when it becomes apparent how large this is. Uh, I don't know how many of the folks on the board actually walk that path every day, but lots of people do, and they're not going to be happy, and they will be kind of shocked. And this is, I, I would join in Eric's comment that, uh, you know, Bill Hansel is a, is a highly regarded local architect. It was imprudent for the board to hire a former board member. It gives people the sense that this is kind of a club, that you're really kind of working together, you're working with staff, you're working with each other, you're working with former folks in local government, and you're not really paying attention to what the local community is going to accept. It may be that some version of this design will be emotionally, practically, et cetera, uh, acceptable to the folks who live around here. But I think if you vote on it tonight without having done your uh, 
political homework. Now, aside from the fact that you have obviously the powers of the idea of quorum, you can vote on it. Uh, but I think you're going to get a negative reaction. I mean, Eric uh, pointed out that he has 200 signatures already objecting to the plan. And not so much objecting to the plan, but asking for it to be opened up for community comment, for people to give input. And I don't mean showing up in a meeting like this where somebody has to stand up and just give their five minutes of what I think and then have you go vote and have your caucus. But actually take into consideration what people will accept. This appears to be something of a Taj Mahal when something less than that might be acceptable to many people. My suggestion, unless you want to get into a situation where there's a petition of a thousand signatures or two thousand or a recall vote or that sort of thing, is that you give it just a little bit of a rest. That you don't vote on your motion. You made the motion in the second to approve this design and proceed on to further planning with staff and look at uh, budgeting and engaging our landscape architects, sending more money out the door on this thing. Uh, and then I should have this is in a time when we're talking about difficulty in funding the fire department, and yet we seem to have tons of money for this thing. We don't know how much because we haven't started to talk budgets yet. But I think you need a little time to warm up the community with this. So I would ask one of the three of you tonight to make a motion to postpone your vote on the motion to approve <coughs> for at least 60 days. It will, it will make Eric's uh, head explode when I say that, because this is the last thing he wants. I've always been working real hard on this. But I think you're going to run into a political problem if you don't kind of open up the process a bit, publicize a little bit better uh, what you have in mind out there, and see what the community thinks. And I would add, I'm not quite finished, and if, if you don't do that, the reaction that you're going to have is that it was pushed through too fast. And I don't think you want that. I mean, you guys work real hard. And you, you listen to the, uh, even a portion of the discussions about the funding of the fire department, the joint powers authority, shared services agreements. There's a lot you guys have on your plate. And I don't think you should make a mistake of having an issue like this, which you probably think it was a relatively minor issue on your overall uh, schedule of things you have to do to cause kind of a rift in the community. I think you ought to take a little more time and get folks in line with it. Because they may well be. I don't know. I'm not a student, I guess. I'm skeptical of it. But uh, it may be that if you, if you get the community behind you, and you can vote it through, proceed along with all the budgeting, and everything will go smoothly. If you don't, I don't think you will. I think you'll be awkward. So that's my my two cents. Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. um, what, anybody else? Yes. 